subsidiary, subsidiary company of Emprise can read. Today we have another edition of Emprise cooking his own food for once and not just getting fast food. And today, as you can see, we have kind of a different dish. We have some rice, we have some shredded iceberg lettuce with some cucumbers, and then we have a mysterious banana and chicken and cream and chili sauce concoction. And that is actually a native Nordic dish, a sort of hangover cure, as it's been used, called Flying Jacob. The actual name is like Fly Gond Jacob or something like that. But this is America. God damn it. So instead of making the Flying Jacob, I actually made the Flying Price, which um, the only main difference of having a Flying Price as compared to a Flying Jacob is that uh, you get a drink Guinness while you do it. So let's quick pop this guy open right here. And for dessert, you'll actually notice we have some more car caramel corn. This was in our last video, but as the last was like that, um, like white chocolate sea salt, today is uh, in the spirit of Guinness. Irish cream. And no, not alcoholic Irish cream, but just like minty, dark chocolate kind of a uh, kind of taste. So we'll be having that, that for dessert. All right, let's get our Guinness popped open and let's, let's uh, try not to explode our microphone here. Oh yes. Must maximize all sounds. system. Uh, today is going to be Snoopy. He'll stop us from being a, a total savage. All right, I, I think I got, I think Snoopy fought back. I got some strings on my face. And then you can balance the taste of the flying, the flying rice with some plain rice here. Not price rice, just plain rice. And then, some salad. Oh gosh, I got some chicken in the salad. That's not never a bad thing. Chicken. 
Or if they even don't have that, you can just use the um, little like chicken, grilled chicken bites you'll see in like the prepackaged meat aisle. It may not be as good as a roast chicken, but hey, a lot cheaper, a lot easier. Recipes down below in the description. 
So please, you know, try it for yourself. Try it at home. It really is a super simple dish, and it just is, it just is amazing. You know, you can't go wrong. And all your friends will think you're cool because you, you know, thought of this crazy creation. And if you have no friends, this dish will certainly get you some. will get at the heart of why I like whimsy so much, but I just need, you know, my usual warm-up, but I'm, I'm getting there, I promise. Oh, one o'clock in the afternoon, here I come. So, back to, I guess, my favorite example of, like, whimsy. One of my favorite examples of just like the base pleasure of reading it would be the the Tarzan novels. Now I mentioned this in my other video uh, description link something said somewhere, okay? For my 100 subscriber celebration that I absolutely love Tarzan books that were written almost 100 years ago. Over 100 years ago in some cases. And these actually are the, uh, the vintage uh, Tarzan white bags that I have, and then these were the random copies I got from my uncle that I probably, maybe, I didn't steal them, he lent them to me, but I haven't given them back for like 10 years, so who do they belong to, me or him? But what is crazy about Tarzan and what they never really touch on in like the, you know, the Disney movie is how wacky and just, you know, old age romantic his stories are. He, you know, he's raised by apes, he learns all these different languages, and as he travels, and he always ends up in these mysterious valleys, these lost valleys where, you know, in these ones he travels to, like, dinosaur-infested areas, and he fights dinosaurs, he has a book where he fights, like, the Roman Empire, where there's one where he fights in the medieval era, and he's, like, you know, uh, jousting, and having uh, gladiator matches and all this crazy stuff and I just I so much love that aesthetic and one day when I have more time to write other like series I really want to dig into this kind of whimsical fantastical just like totally for fun you know setting that you don't really get anymore it's, there's a lot of like old fiction from very long ago that deals with that sort of that irreverence that I just wish that today's era had. I think we're just so serious, you know, in, in today's culture. serious everybody is and how serious like a lot of art nowadays is I just think a lot of it comes across as being very pretentious and being very like holier than thou and I find a lot of it tends to alienate people either you have stuff that is just so snooty that no one likes or you have stuff that is you know, clearly has some kind of social agenda, some kind of political agenda, and they're just kind of shoving it down the viewers or the readers or whoever's throat. 
or you just have stuff that, you know, has like no meaning whatsoever, and it's just kind of like, you know, kind of blah, and that's good, you know, every once in a while, it's good for like, you know, obviously with my Tarzan books, it's, you gotta have fun once in a while, but in terms of like, trying to make something that people can enjoy, but also has a sort of deeper meaning, I think whimsy can really help out with that, because a lot of times, much like humans themselves, I think, whimsy has this sort of veneer or facade of being like fun and happy and quirky, but below the surface, when you really get to know a person or when you really get to know a piece of art, you can see not necessarily always like the darker half, you know, not trying to be edgy, but the half that people are more self-conscious about, the, the part that people maybe lie about or hide. The sort of the sort of truth you could say about a person or about an artistic subject. And I'm gonna take a big bite of this banana here, and then we're gonna get into some artistic subjects that I really like. Uh, yeah, nice bacon and, and peanut on top. you notice I like my bacon really crispy, almost black, well, mostly black. of sort of whimsical art that can reveal a deeper part of oneself or of a culture or society and whatnot, I think I usually reach out to sort of chic futurism or any kind of like, you know, mid-century depiction of futurism. And today I actually have a on Mars. 
Mars and Venus and Saturn somehow. And they're like exploring the, uh, the galaxy and they find like a, like a Martian, basically relic. And it's this guy who's like frozen in time from like a million years ago. And um, they revive him. And it's about how once he gets revived, he tries to, you know, of course, conquer Earth and how they have to stop him and, you know, travel across the galaxy to find, you know, allies and, you know, pretty, pretty wacky and kooky. Kind of what you'd expect from something written in like the 1940s or 50s. Oh my god, so good. Do I have to talk about this? Can't I just eat? But what's interesting about this? I read it recently when I came back from my vacation in Denver. That's where I got the book. What astounded me was how it compared to current times. Because how the alien, you know, the Martian guy, gains a lot of power on Earth is actually like people willingly give it to him. And like kind of like a, half the planet pretty much makes him like their leader because he appeals to a lot of like the current crises and uh, bad things going on, essentially. And um, he's very much a populist, you could say. There's a lot of zealotry that goes into supporting him. And um, what's weird about it, very frightening, is they talk about, yeah, people latched on to him because the current president was impeached many times. And there have been assassination attempts on mayors. And there's more children dropping out of schools than any time ever. There's violence and riots and looting in the streets. And I'm like, oh, wait a second. Oh, gee, that sounds a lot like uh, America right now. And I'm like, oh, my God. You know, this thing is from, you know, how many years ago? Yeah, it was from how many years ago? And it's almost like the events that led up to, like, this horrible alien takeover are, like, currently happening in America on all sides of, you know, the political sphere. Not trying to make this political or anything, but, you know, I think we can all agree that America is pretty, pretty crazy right now, as well as a lot of other countries around the world. It's just kind of a very tense, um, oh God, the Guinness. It's a very tense time in our world, you know, everywhere, whether you're, you know, in one of these horrible war zones or whether you're even distance from it all, you know, you can't really be distance when you're all trapped on the same planet. Which is, funnily enough, something that, like, one of the love interests in this book is always like, yeah, let's go to Venus, let's escape. And it's like, you know, if only we had another planet we could escape to. But even the guy in this is like, you know, we could escape to Venus, but at what point will, you know, all these new places just become, you know, just like Earth, and can you ever really escape? And then we have um, Ahead of Time, which is just a collection of short, short stories, and I obviously am not going to cover every single short story in this, but I will talk about, you know, one in particular that was very, very haunting. After this cucumber, of course. There's a spider down there. Get away. Can't ever have a peace.
peaceful viewing, can I? So, 
good. so special is it facilitates this sort of balance between fun and meaning because we have a lot of fun and we have this magical whimsical sort of story but between that we have some deeper meaning which is why I like whimsy because it acts as a sort of Trojan horse for artistry it's how you can go sort of blend you know people always say there's a difference between craft and art right well i think they can be combined because you know craft is maybe more centered around making money whereas art is more centered around like the personal experience personal expression heavy emotions and stuff like that but i think you can combine them with whimsy when you have a story that is you know funny and happy and kind of cutesy and fantastical and then you have this sort of meaning that you can ingrain in people or at least make people you know think about what they've just encountered make people go on with questions and you know have that sort of discussion and that dialogue afterwards and even if they don't recognize the deeper meaning well they still had fun with the fantastical story so you can please in my opinion, you can please everyone at once because the people who don't care about the meaning will, you know, get their fun story. People who don't care about the fun story will still get their meaning. And then the people who want to mix up both, well, you have both. And I don't think any other sort of style can do that like Whimsy can. Like these fantastical sort of genre adventures from uh, the, the 20th century. See, I got it right. you all to go to your local used bookstore or maybe just if you don't have one go online try to find one and just get some random books from you know a hundred years ago try them out see what they're like see what new ideas you can glean from them and even if you don't necessarily glean ideas well they're fantastic examples of seeing how People have really always kind of been the same, you know, forever. People all have the same emotions, the same desires, the same fears. And, you know, seeing art from a hundred years ago really puts into perspective how, how maybe little we are on an individual level and how everyone, no matter, you know, your origin kind of goes through the same story and the same, the same hardship. And I mean also, it's pretty cool to support your local bookstore. That's certainly what M. Price would do. And don't you want me to like you? Whatever that's worth.
you know, even these videos are kind of a great example of it because I'm trying to, to lure you in with the eating cool foods and whatnot. But I always want to like discuss something, you know, have a kind of fun discussion that we can talk about, you know, anything that's on your mind or my mind. And, you know, that's not just just plain Jane sameness. I wanna I wanna I wanna dissect the meaning of the world and all that kind of kinda I don't wanna say intellectual stuff because, you know, there's different kinds of intelligence, but I'm just a curious guy and I just like seeing how other people think and I think exploring, you know, these fun ideas through maybe uh, well, exploring these maybe deeper ideas or like the funness of having a, a whimsical uh, a whimsical meal. You know, it's kind of fun, isn't it? Kind of neat. series. If you want an example of that, you should check out um, Cerebus. Not Cerberus, but like Cerebus. It's like uh, this, this artwork guy. He's an artwork, right? Or Armadillo. One of those, no. Arthur's an artwork. Yeah. Arthur reference. But um, that's another thing where like I witnessed one of the most like the powerful stories about alcoholism from this random comic, you know. That's the kind of thing I'm looking for. And if you look it up, that's kind of the aesthetic of, like, this grunge fantasy. Either going in the barbarian big muscles, fighting big monsters, or, like, uh, very simplistic, very dark and shaded uh, kind of comic books, you know. Whether it's Cerebus or what is that, Blood Elves was... Just look it up, you'll find it. And I like to write a sort of grunge fantasy about like Viking people, kind of Viking warriors living in the north and you know, fighting weird like, you know, saber tooth monsters or trolls or other like kind of dark fantasy um, enemies and different tribes and cultures and kind of their adventures across this sort of you know, foreboding wasteland. I think that'd just be super fun. And maybe you could just, you know, dive into some pretty surface level with themes of like humanism or, you know, empathy, you know, just stuff like that to still have a fun adventure story, but, you know, keep people, keep people either like their mental gears in check while they're doing it as well. Now, what else do I want to do? Oh, I'm out. None of these are like fully fleshed out, by the way. I'm obviously working on other material at the moment. Kind of just vague outlines in my head, these ones. But um, I want to have like a chic futurism thing about, you know, colonizing other planets. Am I allowed to say colonizing on here, by the way? Or is that, who knows? But people exploring other planets and checking out the life, and I know that's probably a little similar to Star Trek, but you know, whatever, right?
remember if you've ever played the, uh, the board game Arkham Horror, or even like Mansions of Madness, whatever edition you happen to have or can buy. I always get ideas about maybe having a sort of story like that. And for those who don't know, it's kind of about H.P. Lovecraft style monsters. So like Cthulhu and, you know, big kind of alien behemoths from ancient civilizations or from, you know, outer space and whatnot. God, so many count many times Guinness attacks me. Um, but I think it'd be so cool to, in the game, you're like a bunch of um, regular people who are basically trying to stop the invasion of this alien monster, stop them from waking up or coming to Earth and destroying everything. And I think it'd be so cool to have a sort of whimsical kind of detective -y slash ensemble cast story of, you know, this town trying to fight back these horrible, horrible monsters. And I think that you could, yeah, have like the whimsical fantasy adventure of obviously everything I just described, but then kind of have, you know, maybe deeper questions or, you know, any kind of, you can explore any kind of idea with that. I mean, cosmic horror is so, is so boundless and a nice little, uh, you know, sub exploration of this uh, 20th century literature we've been talking about. It's not always necessarily about writing or reading either. I do the same with uh, film or music or theater. All right, we got one piece of banana and chicken left. If you're still with me, thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. And I do appreciate this banana. I think we're done with our 
whimsical. Is there another spider? Oh my god, stop. Maybe that's the same one from before. Lucky I'm moving out of this place. But, uh, I think we're pretty much done with, done with, our, done with our discussion. And I'm just going to munch on some popcorn to play us out. Until my camera dies. But I will still do my outro. Eat this chicken banana casserole because once again, it's amazing.